The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee, and a large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he knew himself what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to the disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the barley loaves that had, <clears throat> that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. We all have our hopes and dreams and our dreams. One of the tasks of life is to keep our hopes and our dreams alive. That can sometimes be difficult. Our hopes and dreams are not always well received by others. We can be told that we are unrealistic, that we should settle for less. Yet we need our hopes and dreams. They can energize us to move much further than we might otherwise move. We might not always reach the goal of our hopes and dreams, but in reaching for that goal, we grow as a human beings. In many ways, we are defined more by what we aim for than by what we actually do. It is our hopes, dreams, and goals that shape us. There is a sense in which hopes, dreams, and goals will always be unrealistic. They invite us to look beyond, real, beyond reality as it is and to move toward something better and fuller. In the Gospel reading, Jesus looks out on a very large, hungry crowd. His dreams, hope, was that they could be fed, even though the place was remote. His questions to Philip were, where can we buy enough food for them to eat, could be understood as a way of testing the nature of and quality of Philip's own dreams and hopes for, the, for these people. 
Philip's response suggests that he did not really share Jesus' hopes and dreams for this crowd that had come out to him. Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. Philip saw the issue in financial terms and quickly concluded that there was not viable financial solution to the problem that faced them. Philip was being realistic, but Jesus was testing him to have bigger dreams and better hopes for these people. We can sometimes, too, easily allow financial considerations to kill off our hopes and dreams. A great deal can be accomplished and great good can be done even in the absence of money. The most precious gift we have to offer others are not financial ones, but gifts of friendship, love, understanding, acceptance, and forgiveness. The gift of time and of listening ears, the gift of a compassionate heart, These are the gifts that work little miracles. Even when our financial resources are very low, we can reach the life of others in significant ways. We can never underestimate the resources we have within us and among us to enhance the life of others. If Philip thought Purely in financial terms, the other disciple in the Gospel reading, Andrew, recognized that there were some resources among the crowd who needed feeding, but he considered them hopelessly inadequate. There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Even though he was beginning to look in the right direction, he could not allow himself to share Jesus' dreams and hopes that this crowd could be fed, could be fed in this remote place. The question of Andrew, what good are these for so many, is one that finds an echo in our lives. We can have our hopes and dreams for ourselves and others, but we wonder where we are going to get the means to accomplish all that seems good and necessary. The equivalent equivalent of the barley loaves and toothpaste at our disposal can seem so inadequate to meet the need and to accomplish the task. Then the persistent question can begin to eat away at us. It is, is there any purpose in our hopes when they are sure to be frustrated? The temptation can be to compromise our hopes and to settle for something that is second best. We begin to think that we should really be cutting down our hopes and dreams to what is often termed reality. Reality, of course, cannot be ignored. The question of Andrew, what good are these for so many, was a realistic question. It need to be asked, but it did not settle the matter. In this situation, the last word was not determined by Andrew's realism, but by the generous hopes and dreams that Jesus had for this crowd. The evangelist would have us believe that Jesus' hopes and desires for the crowd came to pass, 
in spite of the enormity of the challenge and the limited nature of the resources. Jesus worked powerfully through the meager resources that were given to him, and as a result, the seemingly impossible came to pass. The comment of Philip and the question of Andrew, both of which suggested that nothing could be done, gave way before the powerful word and action of Jesus. The Lord, can con the Lord can continue to work powerfully today in situations that, that seems hopeless and lacking in promise. The Lord continues to have hopes and dreams for all of us who are searching for hope, for wholeness and nourishment in life. He invites us to keep entering into his hopes and dreams for ourselves and others, rather than allow ourselves to become bitter and pessimistic because the situation seems so doubting. The Lord also calls on us to trust that even when our resources seem meager and the situation facing us seems to overwhelm us, his power at work in and through us can accomplish far more than we could imagine or hope for. Please stand and let us profess our faith. <laughs> 